How you doing folks? I'm Gary and this is the Cult of Drummer. Welcome back to the dining room folks. Um, tonight we're going to have another little look at uh, one of the samples and miniatures that I've got lying on the shelves behind me. This one I've decided to grab is the Glen Grant. Um, this is the Major's Reserve, I think we call it. We'll do is we'll get it in the glass and then we'll have a wee chat. Now, Glen Grant, probably um, a whiskey that I've kind of been putting off chatting about. Um, not for any reason really about the standard of the whiskey or anything like that. It's more it's a there's a bit of a sentimental attachment to Glen Grant. It was actually my my dad's um, favourite whisky. Um, dad passed away what, three years ago now. Um, so I, whenever I kind of look at Glen Grant, it always makes me think about my dad. So yeah, it's it's something that's in the house, but it's something I don't drink too often. Um, um, I'm not 100% sure why, maybe just that sentimental side of things. So Glen Grant, for anyone that's uh, unfamiliar with it, is a Speyside distillery. It's in the wee town of Rothis, um, which is in Murrayshire. It's uh, about 40 minute drive away from me. Myself, um, Amy and our kids popped through there last, last weekend. Um, just If you've never been to that distillery, it's a lovely distillery to actually visit. Um, and not just because of the whiskey. Um, there is a fantastic sort of shop, visitor centre, cafe, etc. there as well. But there are the most wonderful gardens, sort of landscaped, um, very um, manicured gardens, a lovely walk. You can go for a picnic and sit in the gardens. There's waterfalls and everything, and it's really an enjoyable day if the weather's really good to go for a walk around the gardens as well as the sort of whiskey side of the distillery. So yeah, me and the wife and uh, the boys went through there last weekend and it was great. So let's get back to the whiskey. So Glen Grant as a distillery has been um, located there since um, 1840, originally under Grant family ownership. Over the years, it's, um, it tried to maintain that sort of family um, ownership. But I think it was by about 1960s that the family side of things was starting to disappear. The distillery itself went through um, changes of ownership. At some stages, it was part of um, Glenlivet. It was um, part of Courage um, Brewers. Um, also, the, the Japanese Santoroi um, group had it for a while, um, and it sort of moved around a bit. And today, it's actually owned by an Italian company, uh, the Campari Group. You, you may be familiar with the Spirits Campari, so that's where it maintains its sort of uh, ownership today, um, under Italian ownership. During its lifetime, a lot of the the product that was coming out of Glen Grant wasn't always used in single malts. Um, I think over the years, percentages have changed, sort of 50-50, um, 60-40%. Um, a lot of it went towards um, blends, um, and in particular, um, it went into a lot of the, the Shivas, you know, um, Brothers um, whiskies, which are still out there today. And at one time, that was part of the same ownership. Um, Colonel Ricard ended up ownership of the, the Shivers Group. Um, so now what happens is that they are actually a customer of Glen Grant. So a lot of Glen Grant's um, output still goes towards those blends. But they're just not within the same company. They're actually a, a customer. Um, so there you go. Um, as a whiskey on the sort of um, um, the worldwide market, um, Glen Grant is very popular in continental Europe, and particularly Italy. Um, I believe Italy is its number one market. France comes in at number two. Um, 
but they've seen upturns in the sales uh, in Germany, um, Sweden, Switzerland, and these sort of places as well. So it's a very popular drama over on the uh, on the continent outside of Europe. It's not unpopular everywhere else. It's just maybe harder to find in some of these places. And even here in Scotland, it's not one of those ones you're going to see on all the shelves. Um, quite often you actually have to go to a specialist uh, whiskey retailer or even the distillery in itself to buy it. Um, just checking on, online this morning at what their, um, they have, what the core sort of range is. They, they do have what we're going to call the sort of entry level dram, which is their non-age statement. We're going to have a look at in a moment. And then there's various age statements, um, with the most popular one being their 15 year old. Um, I've seen some reviews of it lately from some other people talking about it. And the 15 is quite a popular whiskey. So there you go, Glen Grant, if you want to have a wee look at that, they've got a website and you can go and have a little read up on what their output is like and what they've got in their core range. So as I said, we're going to have a look at what they call um, the Major's Reserve. Now the Major apparently was a member of a family, Major Grant. And if you ever go through to the gardens I was talking around, if you go walking around the gardens, there's some little wall safes and things and it's sort of I think the history is that at some stage when he was walking around these gardens himself he would hide bottles of whiskey and lock them in these safes so when he was on his walk around the gardens he could stop get his key out have a wee dram and then carry on on his little journey the story is something along that lines okay um this dram itself as i said it's a 40 percent um non-age statement whiskey there so it's you know, minimum of three years old, um, and it's not expensive. It's in the region of £23, um, £25, something like that. Um, so for the price, um, very good. Let's see what it's like on the nose. Obviously with a 40%, there's no major burn in there. I can get my nose all the way at the bottom of the glass. Um, and you're not going to be burning yourself on there. So there is um, vanillas. I want to say there's a slight raisinish to it. Um, now, when I think about the maturation of this, Glen Grant in the past used to be quite sort of big on sherry maturation. And then when they do independent bottling, um, I think particularly um, Gordon McPhail, they, they do some um, Glen Grant's uh, independent bottling. They often use um, some sherry maturation in it. But the actual... Um, distillery bottlings themselves, they've tended to stay away from the sherry maturation now. And it's all um, ex bourbon casks. And if my memory serves me right, I think it's wild turkey bourbon casks that they use. Not 100% on that, but I'm pretty sure it's wild turkey that they get their bourbon casks from. And there is a good sort of vanilla essence, sort of essence coming through, which you quite often find in the bourbon. But if they're not using the sherry maturation, I'm not quite sure why I'm sort of getting that reasonably fruity. But it's nice. Nothing complicated on the nose. But pleasant. Let's have a wee sip. Slight spice, white pepper. Quite strong the vanilla. Um, slightly watery. Mm, watery on the finish. Mm. For a whiskey that's 20 odd pound and at 40%, you know, you can, you're almost going to expect that. But the vanilla essence is nice in there. Um, and that, yeah, there is a nice sort of spice. It kind of fills the top of your mouth with the spice. Not on the finish. It's Moorish without being exciting. There, there, there's nothing in there that's sort of grasping me and saying you'll run off out and buy a whole case of the stuff. But there's nothing in there saying don't rush through this bottle, take your time and enjoy it. It's one of those whiskies where it's not complicated that you can't, you know, it's not going to sit there and make you think, well, what am I tasting really? But you could easily sit there and sip that. 
you're not going to sort of sit back and contemplate the end of the world and things with it. But you might sit there in the evening watching a movie and just having a dram where you want to enjoy the dram but not distract you from what you're actually doing, which is quite nice. Yeah, now I mean, there's a lot more to Glen Grant than this uh, sort of non age statement dram. And uh, if I wasn't so sentimental about it, I'd probably talk more about Glen Grant. Um, it's absolutely not bad whiskey. I am, um, and what I'll maybe do next time is I'll maybe actually have a look at the 15 year old because it really does, you know, bring in some plaudits. And if I'm going to talk about it, the, a distillery that has a little bit of sentiment about it, maybe I should look at a whiskey that uh, really displays more of the character of that distillery. But to be honest, Glen Grant, non age statement, the, the Major's Reserve is really not a bad drum for probably less than 25 quid, guys. Slange.